Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the last Ramblecast in South Korea. We are, as always, joined by Kavix the Elf, who couldn't make it today, but he's an elf. Don't know what he's up to. Uh, Two-Way and Slab Wrangle, and of course, me, Zaffy Geek. How are you guys doing? I know I've asked you this exactly four minutes ago, but I'll do it again. Well, the same I'm actually as four live minutes for ago. a change. Mm. You actually yes. have a camera for a change, and nobody's here to witness it. Oh, well. Shame. <laughs> You're live. People will go, oh my god, he's live, he's live. Like, yeah, he's live. Yeah, well, people it's one of those things. Yeah, they don't want to talk to you. It's because it's because you're live that no one's joined the chat yet. <laughs> yeah. It's like, holy shit, who's that fourth person? <laughs> Wait, our names are correct? Yes, our names are correct. Um, <laughs> so, welcome to Ramblecast, where we talk about video games and all things geeky, and ramble about most things, and in this case, probably South Africa. Mm-hmm. Yes, probably South Africa. I'll probably ramble about South Africa. Um, I'll start off with my last two weeks. The last time we spoke was about a month ago. A month yeah, or two we haven't ago. done a ramble cast in this last month. Yeah. The last ramble cast we actually did was just before Christmas? Just before yeah, Christmas? Yeah, the, uh, the one where I had the bad internet. Yes. Yes, where you had the bad internet. Um... A lot has happened in in, in between. Uh, we've lost Lemmy, we've lost Alan Rickman, and we've lost Bowie, or Bowie, or however the hell you pronounce his surname. Uh, yeah. A lot of... Uh, all three to cancer, right? Or something. All three to cancer, essentially. Yep. Smoking, I mean, bad. Smoking, bad. Um, but I mean... Uh, let me just do that. The interesting bit is, out of those three, the ones that we expected it from went first. <laughs> Lemmy. He used to drink like a bottle of scotch every day, and when doctors told him he had to live healthier, he switched to a bottle of vodka every day. <laughs> that was his thing of going healthy. And then, all of a sudden... <laughs> the other guys were just like, hey, now we, uh, <laughs> we're also on our way out. Kind of shitty. They just, uh, yeah, they just couldn't take it. They, mm. they went for the cancer suicide route to follow Lemmy. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, yeah, but that's, that was kind of a bad thing. This is a bad year for celebrities. I bet yeah. you now all the celebrities look at, looks, looks at them and go, oh, shh. Shit, we better live healthier. Better switch from vodka to brandy, I guess. <laughs> you know? <laughs> from cocaine yeah. just to whores. Because mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. the worst thing that can happen is Charlie Sheen. <laughs> yeah. Y yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eight million dollars later and he decides to come clean after paying all those bribes. Yeah, I don't even... Celebrities, man, they're crazy. Yep. They're really fucking who's crazy. Your, who's your favorite celebrities? Favorite celebrity, and when the news broke of Alan Rickman, I'm like, oh shit. My favorite celebrity is going to go this year. I mean, yeah, let's, if, if let's this go year... Yeah, let's live, or else I'll go Robin Williams. <laughs> if this year is the year of... The year that takes away celebrities, then my celebrity is definitely probably there's, there's a good chance he would go. Um, my my yes. favorite celebrity is uh, Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, Ozzy Ozzy's Ozzy. immortal. <laughs> yeah, it's like all those 1980s drugs. There's two people that just are immortal from taking too many drugs, and the one is Ozzy. Yeah, and the other dude is uh, what's his name from the Rolling Stone, Keith Richards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although between the two, two of them, Ozzy is the bet looks better for wear, at least. <laughs> uh, mind you, Keith Richard hasn't aged in about twenty years because I think he's about at the limit of what aging can do for you. 
And what's your celebrities, your favorite celebrities, if you have any? Um, well, male celebrities, okay, actors would have to be uh, either Leonardo DiCaprio or um, what's his name, Captain Jack Sparrow. Uh, Johnny Depp. Yeah. Johnny Epp, that's it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> put me on the spot. Um, you can you can see who's living with a with a girl future wife. He's got yeah. his male and female celebrities. You've got both categories. I'm like, it's only one guy mattering to me now. That's it's important. <laughs> that's it. Watch the female celebrities. Uh, Katy Perry's hot. Hmm, <coughs> she is, and so is Lily Allen. They look alike, by the way. She's all right. I don't like her music, though. It's very British. Well, not even. I, it's I like don't super know. British. I don't and, even know who that is. And then we've got Zoe de Chanel. The three, the three, the triplets oh, of yes, Hollywood. Zoe. Yeah, they yeah. look. They look. They look exactly. They look like almost, almost like carbon copies of each other. It's like yeah. Uh, uh, something went wrong no, there. I, yeah, but I would actually go Zoe Deschanel as my favorite. Mm -hmm. She looks uh, she looks very friendly and homely, and it's like she could be a good friend as well. Okay. Type of thing. Okay. And your celebrities, Mister Two Way. Also, just male, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Joseph Gordon Levitt, he is pretty damn awesome, actually. He um, was Larry and Theodore from the Sun. Yes, I think so. Tom, Dick, Harry. He was Tom, Dick. Mm. Dick was a tall guy. Harry was he was Tommy. Tom. He was Tom. Yeah, hmm? yeah, he was. Yeah, he was Tommy. Hmm. Um, favorite politician. Trump. 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 <laughs> Trump. <laughs> <laughs> no. Trump, is Trump, it Trump is trumps like everybody? Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I watched uh, I watched the Daily Show with Trevor Noah the other day, and he was talking about how Trump is your perfect African president. Mm. <laughs> it's actually really good. You should watch it. Yeah, I've seen that a couple of times. The funny thing is now, here's the difference between what I found between South African Facebook and Facebook over here. <coughs> You get a lot more over here. You get a lot more of the expat news and shares on Facebook. Like the video you told me about was <coughs> shared about three or four times in the last week alone. And that video has been out for about a month. Yeah. Um, so it's like you told me that video. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of a cool video. I've seen it about a thousand times. So... <laughs> Patrick, how you doing? How you doing? His name is Patrick. Do not try and pronounce that. Do not try and pronounce that. <laughs> Just want to say on, on my camera, don't know what's up. I'm blaming fucking Skype. Okay. Because it's just randomly switching it off, so I'll, I'll try and notice it and just, put it back just, on. Just it. move your mouse around every two seconds. Maybe no, Skype... My, my mouse has been moving the whole time. Yes. So... No, no, no. We'll uh, we'll hopefully think that Skype gods will keep it alive for a change. <laughs> the new lady slow. That's what I thought in the same in the in the the, the moment I saw his name. It's actually Bedev Vladislav, a bead Vladislav, bead Vladislav. Yes, and I still uh -huh. screw that name up. <laughs> hey, um, this name I know. Poppy, Poppy Street, that I can pronounce. That you can pronounce, yes, indeed. <laughs> um, so, favorite politicians. Why are we talking about politicians Trump. on a gaming show? Or on a gaming Big show? That, was, that is Max fault. <laughs> Slammer and ghoul! <laughs> I just want to know, is people, are the people actually talking in chat? Because I don't see yes. anything. Yes. They are talking. You're... I've been told that my pronunciation is wrong. Yes. 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 Um, but, yeah, this is the last 
Jack Black's albino. <laughs> you're, you're Jack Black's albino brother, apparently, too, eh? <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I've done... This week, That I've what I've done is I've finished Mad Max, the game. And? Disappointing? Grinding? Grindy as hell. Grindy as hell. And... When I finished the game, some of my viewers told me that this was actually the proposed a proposed storyline idea for the movie. And I'm like, I can see this actually work as a storyline for the movie. You know, you can see you can see it actually as a storyline. The storyline was brilliant. Um, but only at the end, not during the beginning. Uh, the beginning is... I mean, just imagine a movie. Oh, damn, I need to build my own stronghold. Let's go kill a couple of guys and collect their scrap. <laughs> It'll be a six-parter hey, movie. It sounds like Waterworld. Yes. Yep. Yes. It'll be a six-parter movie where the first five parts are actually the guy just driving around, doing random f uh, missions and construction quests <laughs> for the places that he's trying to build up. <laughs> um... But it's a cool... The storyline, if they... There's a reason why it wasn't made into the movie. Obviously, because it was basically... Uh, this guy kills this guy to avenge his family. Hmm. Where have I heard that before? And which Mad Max was that? Um, <laughs> and yeah. I, I also finished Bioshock 1. Uh, probably the shortest, shortest, shortest game that I've played on stream I finished it in 8 hours less than 8 hours I started it the front no 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 sorry I finished it in about 11 12 hours um I started the Friday morning played for 4 hours and then I played an extra 6 hours the Friday night and I finished it and I'm like oh and even then it reminds me of another game and even then it started feeling a bit long towards the end it's like it felt drawn out um, it felt drawn out and everything, <clears throat> and, um, yeah, that was the two games that I finished, uh, this week, or played this week, actually. The shortest game I've ever played was, um, True Crime Streets of LA. Mm -hmm. It's, um, sort of a mix mash GTA fighting, racing, running simulator, and, but that's um, quite old, right, Matt? Yeah, just it's actually so I, quite old. It's just, yeah, it's just what, what sticks it into my brain is from start to finish six hours. It's like I installed it the day and I finished it the night, and I was like, huh. Hmm, that's interesting. It's it's the same as with what the the last Call of Duty that had an actual decent single player. Well, then again, I <laughs> I think it was Call of Duty. <laughs> It was the one where you do the beach storming thing. Call of Duty 2? Call of Could Duty... Um, Call of Duty 1 was World War 2. That I remember. Which one was the beach of Normandy? There was one. Okay, then one. I installed it the morning at 6 o'clock. Finished it that night, just uh, that afternoon, at just past, just a few minutes past 5. I'm like... I actually remember that campaign was very short because you had these sections. It's first you play as American soldier storming the beach, mm. then as something else, and then as you play as a British soldier, and very very short. Very short, yeah. But another game, and I actually got it. I have to tell you about this. Another game that's so worth it, so fucking worth it to get. Two D platformer. You need a controller for it. Just saying. Ori and the Blind Forest. Mother fucker. I've never felt so many feels during a game, during the playthrough of a game. It was like afterwards, I, I looked at the chat and I'm like, guys, I'm just going to sit here for 10 minutes. I will talk to you, but I'm going to sit here and reflect on what I've just experienced. And about seven of those ten minutes, I was quiet. I'm like, I was just sitting there going, "What the? Ah, oh. ah, oh, ah, oh. ah." Oh. You know. So, 
so worth it. Well worth it, well worth it. Uh, your first playthrough would take you about 13 hours. Especially if you want to collect everything. I almost collected everything. Um, but, yeah, that is, that, is, that is quite cool. And that's what I've been doing the last two weeks or the last month. I've played other games too. Mostly old nostalgia games. Quake 1, 2, and 3, and 4. That was December. Yeah, that's basically what I've done December up until now. There was another game, but obviously not well, uh, good enough to make me remember it, but yeah, that was that was what I've done in between. Fallout that. 4. <laughs> Fallout 4 was actually the result of me going into a nostalgia trip, where I was like, mm. fuck this game, I'm going to Quake 1. <laughs> Fallout 4? Beautiful graphics. Fuck this, I'm going to Quake 1. Quake 1 is better than Fallout 4. Quake 1 is better than Fallout 4. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, yes, and you can count how many cigarettes I smoke. I never stop smoking, so... Yeah. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, that was basically it. Uh, as far as I remember. You guys, what have you been up to since the well, last Ramble cost? <clears throat> Let's see, what have I been doing? Um, okay, since the last Ramble cast, I finished uh, um, The Witcher 1. Right. Mm -hmm. Then I've been all over the place. Very little time for gaming, but I also went into a bit of a nostalgia trip. I've been playing Morrowind again. And um, crappy ass graphics. Mm hmm. Clumbersome controls, but there's something about that game that is really impressive mm -hmm. that I haven't seen repeated with, in any other game since, is that every single NPC in the game yeah. is a named character. Really? Every single one is a named character. Even it's just some mook that ambushes you in the road, he's got a name. <laughs> and... Um, I don't know how they do it because it's not a, num a random number. It's not a random name generator either because every time it's the same character's name mm -hmm. that will. So it's either a crap load of scripted events or they've got this table for every character. And um, well, the thing is, when was when was Morrowind released? Yeah, shit, going back a um, while, two thousand two, two thousand. I'm guessing two thousand five. Yeah. How big was the installation? I'll tell you now. Why? Uh, because we need to see how big it was in relation to what they did in the graphics engine. Because I think that's probably a shitload of scripted events that they did then. See, yeah, Patrick, it's easy. They cared about the game. That's why that's, there's so that's many it, things. Yes. yes. We don't need to have... Shit. We don't have to... We don't need to have uh, uh, size comparisons of the installation of the game or whatever. We just uh, need to know that they cared about the game. That's the important bit. They cared about the game um, the way Divine Divinity cared about its game. One gig. Larian Studio. One gig. Holy fuck. One gig. Holy shit. Exactly 1024, Meg. <laughs> yeah. But that, that, that's true. And I mean, if you take a look at the interface, it's a little bit clunky. But there's also... The way you progress as a character is something that hasn't really been repeated. Look, they sort of did the similar thing in Oblivion. But your progression as a character is based on what you do in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you do a lot of jumping. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yes, yes, yes. If you're if you're a space biker, your jump skill improves. When if I you when run I around did, everywhere, your athletic skill improves. What I did is I took a old mouse ball yeah. of ours with some press stick and stick stuck it onto my forward key, aimed at the corner, yeah. went and made some coffee. I think I, 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 I let it run like that for about four hours. Came back, I'm like, okay, cool, I'm done. I can run very fast. <laughs> you, you did it the dumb way. You press Q, it's auto run, and you look at a corner, and then you go do something else. 
Dude, I was just into the game. And I'm like, I, I increase my stuff while, fuck this, I'm going to run into a corner and wait for it. <laughs> um, and it's very old school questing. Very mm -hmm. old school questing. Um, you know, when I played it back in the day, it was like normal for me. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a shift to go back to that style where there's no hand holding. It's like, um, go kill this guy. Mm -hmm. And there's only entries put into your journal if you ask questions like, where can I find this guy to kill? Mm -hmm. What are the directions to this town you want me to find the guy to kill? And it's not always that clear. Sometimes the directions are, go to this town and ask a god. You know, it's, really? it's very, very time consuming. And, um, you know, it's quite interesting to look how we've evolved or changed. I don't know if it's really considered evolved. Mm. The way questing or quest objectives have changed based on, I don't know, more bigger influence, really, where you go from quest up to quest up, quest up, versus the, you know, the old school D&D, here's your quest, go do that, figure here's the rest your, out yourself. Here's your quest. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's a big wow influence on that. How and, and, yeah. have changed. And 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 that's that's kind of what I'm missing. I mean, let, let me tell you, right? Let me tell you, I've played. Let me just do quests here. Um. I've played, divine divinity, uh, divinity original sin. Yes. Right. And. I. I was really put off by the fact that they didn't hold your hand throughout <laughs> throughout the um, throughout yeah, the game. Yeah. I'm like I'm like sitting there going, where do I go? Where do we go? What do we do? What what what? You know? And damn it, do I actually have to read the quest now? <laughs> do I have to read the quest and figure it out? I wanted at least some semblance of go to the north to this cave. I'll be like, okay, yeah, okay, cool. I'll go there. <laughs> but um, we um, we uh, I I miss the old system of just like you know what? Here's the quest. Along the way, this is what divinity did wrong. This is what divinity did wrong. They tell you here's the quest. Go explore. And I'll be like, okay, this is it. Yeah. And along the way, you interact with people, and it's quite cool. You get new quests, but you don't know where the hell they're going. Whereas in the old games, they tell you, this is the, <laughs> this is your quest. Good luck, but go look over there for it. How you get there is your prerogative. And along the way, you meet new people. They give you quests, and they tell you, go look over there for it, or here, or it's under the sewers somewhere. Mm. Uh, not a lot of hand holding, just a teensy bit, just a like, hey, hey, buddy, it's a big scary world out there. Maybe you should just start looking in the sewers, you know, just start yeah. there, just start there. <laughs> Follow you know, the glowing light on the ground and yeah, the no, giant exclamation on, mark. <laughs> yeah, just before, uh, just on the old Morrowind thing. Alaska Scrolls 3, where the journal didn't keep things in order. It's basically yes. as you pick things up, it just put it in it your journal. Bad. So it was chaotic. It's like you find clues for the same quest, like days apart or something. And then you have to scroll yeah. in your journal and try and find the differences and yeah. where they I mean, are. The journal and the journal was a journal it was chronological as you find something you write it down mm. and if they related to each other well that's for you to figure out yeah yeah you know a questing system that i found actually very good is um it's a semi-hybrid between the old way and the new way but with a twist was the witcher series is in that the quests aren't hand holdy Mm -hmm. But they're not. They also not. Well, yes, some info out in the world you go. It was you record the information as you need to. You personally, as the player, needs to know it. Mm -hmm. If you need to find out more, you ask more. If you don't need to, you can actually go on what is what is given 
and you know there's little tags on the map but what I found really good about the questing system in the Witcher series is the way all the quest or nearly all the quests in some way or another integrate together mm. like the side quests will have an influence on the main quest or will tie up with the main quest or won't be able to even progress unless you've done a certain per portion of the main quest and I found that to be very immersive it that mm. suck you in you know it's not this disjointed thing where you would get to a new area the main quest is there and you sort of ignore it until you've done all the side quests as one tends to do you know yeah especially if you've got OCD and you've got that hundred percent completion monkey on your back yeah something Fallout 4 failed in horribly Here's your main quest. Apparently. Go do your main quest. Oh, you can build cities and towns. I've heard of people spending 30 to 40 hours building like towns and crap in Fallout. I'm like, and that time you could have finished the game. <laughs> you could have finished the game 20 hours in probably. I don't know. No, no, no. I need you to know, build this town. I'm like, fuck, fuck. Don't need to build anyway. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> in all honesty, I think it was a mistake to put town building or the whole sandbox build thing into Fallout. Not because it was done well. I mean, I've seen some videos. It was done pretty freaking well, but it doesn't fit in a Fallout game. Fallout is about a lone wanderer out in the wilderness surviving, mm. going out exploring, finding old government bunkers, getting irradiated finding some kick-ass old technology mm. never never having one place that you call home that is the idea of fallout and to put the settlement thing in i don't know it just it's disjointed yeah yeah it's basically saying i don't think we have enough story or anything to go yeah. on in this one so we'll just add more shit that they can do just so they think there's a lot of replayability and hours you can sink into this. Then again, I've I've heard of a of a of a quest that's not really a quest. As you're exploring the wasteland, you get to like a house, and I've been to this house and everything. And I've that's why I remember this. And you pick up a note saying, "Oh, I love. She's at the docks. Why is she there? I think I actually streamed that. Why is she there and everything? And apparently." If you get up your radiation strength or whatever it's called, your resistance to radiation strong enough, uh, you can go to like the docks or the pier that the woman was standing at. And but there's like lots of clues. There's like it's an infestation of bugs in the house or something. And that was the reason why most people died and some people ran away and one guy came back risking attack by the bugs to try and figure out his ultimate love or whatever. I don't know. It's a massive story. But it turns out if you go take a dive where at the pier where the note tells you to like where the lady stood, you will find a corpse down there. And yeah. it's like, okay, I found a corpse. Okay, so someone died here probably. But but apparently if you actually look at the corpse from a certain angle, the one hand that is closed will have something glowing in it. And if you search the corpse again, I think, or if you gibbet or exploded or something you do something to yeah. the corpse then the hand opens and there's a engagement ring an engagement ring in the hand yeah and that like completes the story apparently uh, oh, okay. i'm like okay so they've done shit like that but still i mean <coughs> don't try and um, fill it grace yeah fill it grace the... mm. what what they missed in fallout 4 i think was they wanted to do too much and as a result did too little of too many if you get what i'm saying is yeah there's this and there's that and then there's this and that and all of them is a bit of a buffet but none of them actually leaves you very satisfied from what i've the seen the thing is the thing is let me let me tell you this if they because firstly the building aspect in fallout 4 i think was a last minute <coughs> tacked on job it was at the last minute they like shit. We need building in our game, mm. and um, it's if they took if that wasn't there, the game probably would have been just as good or maybe maybe even better. Yeah, you know, 
the base building thing, right? This is Bethesda's thing to a degree. But they should have saved it for the next Elder Scrolls game. Because in Elder Scrolls, you want a base. You want a house. I mean, that was one of the first things I did in Morrowind is I would kick somebody out of their home and just dump all my shit there. That would be my house. Mm. And in Oblivion, I bought every house there is. And in Skyrim, I've got the what's his name the the DLC for house building it's 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 a it's a elder scrolls thing so they should have saved it for that instead of mm. putting it in fallout it's yeah it's just fallout 4 is yeah, enough about fallout 4 fuck it fuck it and uh, that's what you've been doing morrowind and morrowind and another game I discovered quite by accident is um, Fortress Craft Evolved. It's a very interesting Minecrafty style game. That um, well, the premise is essentially you in a spaceship, you're busy docking with a space station. It gets smacked by a meteor. Your ship goes hurtling out of control and crashes into a barely hospitable ice planet, and you have to now rebuild or reconstruct your smoldering wreck of a ship so that you can escape mm -hmm. um, that's the idea behind it but the gameplay is open world sandbox similar to Minecraft mm -hmm. with a crap load of automation and um, tower defense your base generates a certain level of threat depending on how much technology how much power how much resources you're busy gathering and as soon as it reaches a certain threshold, crap starts attacking your base. And you've got a gun, a crappy gun that doesn't have a aiming tar a targeting reticle, so you kind of fire blind into the air. Mm -hmm. And after a while, it's just useless. So you have to build up tower defenses and crap. So it's a really interesting game if you're into that sort of thing. Definitely worth checking out. Um, but is it also same Minecraft graphics type of style? No. It's, it's the, updated is graphics. It? Okay. Yeah, updated graphics with shaders, but it's still voxel, you know, it's still blocky. But your machines aren't blocky. They've got proper textures and okay. skins. No, I'll check just, it out because I'm, I'm ta a tad sick and tired of everybody just copying the Minecraft block formula. I've seen no, it way too look, much now. You you still you still are limited to square blocks, but it's not mm. that crappy as retro graphics that is inherent to Minecraft belongs in Minecraft and nowhere mm. fucking else. People get yeah. the fucking clue. No, it looks um, cool. Yeah. It looks really cool. If we could get a server up and running in South Africa, I would definitely record that for the channel. Um, it looks cool. Um, Even the interface is cool. You start off like in a hangar or even a spaceship kind of thing. Yeah. The menu interface, if you click new game, your character walks into a direction and there's like yeah. three different worlds that you can choose from and it shows you the world and everything. Yeah. What is really cool about it is it's not completely sandboxy. It, it actually brings back the gameplay element into a sandbox game. I mean, too often sandbox games are there, go play, make up your life as you see fit. This mm. one's actually got an objective. You have an objective to get off the planet. And in order to do that, you need to research technologies. Mm. In order to research technologies, in order to research technologies, in order to build machines, in order to dig better ore, in order to transport ore better, to so mine it's it. So actually... Ah, so it's actually like Minecraft, find diamond. That is the important bit. This one is like, okay... You know how to dig a hole. You need to research stone. Cool, you've researched stone. Now you need to research coal. <laughs> Stuff like that, right? Similar, what you do is, it's, it's got a... Has there, have any of you, well, modded Minecraft? Anybody in the chat ever played Thorncraft? Oh. Uh, no, you and I had a... Is you have a little scanner, right? And... Mm -hmm. This scanner you can use to scan blocks. You take it to your research station and you identify it. Which is really quite cool to finding ore. Because as soon as you found, let's say, coal, you can see how big the coal vein is by scanning it. And it will tell you there is one million coal in this vein. And you're like, 
Ah, okay, that's worth the effort of putting up a mining rig here and transporting it with conveyor belts and crap. Oh, cool. And actually putting up power. And um, it's also handy because you can scan for unknown materials as well. In that, okay, I've got enough coal, I've got enough iron, I've got enough tin, but I need lithium. So let's scan. It's like, oh, there's a pocket of unknown ore. Let's go. Let's hope it's dig lithium. Let's it see. Yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah. And um, it's got a very interesting. What would you call the food mechanic in Minecraft? I don't know, limiting factor mm -hmm. in that you don't have to worry about sleep and food, but you've got a suit that you has have to got worry about the environmental cold. controls. Yes. And if your suit runs out of power, you start getting hypothermia. And if the area is too cold, the battery usage increases. And wow. you can actually counterbalance this with torches because torches emit both light and heat. So if you stand next to a torch, your battery usage goes down. So um, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. It's still a development build. So, um, you know, bear in mind. But interestingly early enough, access. not as buggy. No, not early access. It's just after early access. The one just it's probably after. beta. <laughs> no, just after beta because there was a beta version, there was an early access version, and then now the latest version is the first official release development version. I don't know what the hell you call that. <laughs> before we know it, we'll have we'll but, have before we know it, there will be stuff like it's in its seventh early access phase. It's almost complete now. <laughs> it's in the um, early adopter phase. Yes. <laughs> sure, sure, let's go with that one. Um, what we could say is if you were to compare it to Minecraft, it is the first version after beta. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And, um, but, but yeah, there was but a lot of betas. Enough, yeah, interestingly mm. enough, very mm. bug free, considering, you know, <laughs> there's a few things that don't <laughs> even have models. You know, they've got the placeholder model for certain icons. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough, it's very bug free. I've had one crash in like 40 hours of play. And that was because. You downloaded porn. Windows, Windows wanted to do an update. Oh. So you, down, yeah. you wanted to download porn. <laughs> Oops, the game crashed. <laughs> what will I do now? <laughs> And this, we're, talk we're talking about this a week before you get married? Yes. A week before you get two married? Weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, yes. Oh, yes, two weeks, yes, two weeks. Two motherfucker. Weeks. In two weeks, I can actually call you a motherfucker. <laughs> well, not quite. I don't have children yet. <clears throat> when you have children, am I allowed to call you a motherfucker? I don't actually know if there's ever a good time to call somebody a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. I won't call you a motherfucker. Um, Two-way. What have you been doing? Oh, oh yes. Shit. Shit. Sorry. Mm. I forgot to give the name. <laughs> the name of the game is Fortress Craft Evolved. <laughs> Fortress Craft okay, Evolved. Okay, yeah. yeah. Anyway, you moving on. You did actually give it in the beginning. Yeah, I wrote it on the top two, so yeah. Yeah. Ah. Um, nothing um, that's actually based on you can finish it. It's been Dota, Rocket League, um, Civilization V uh, with all the expansions. Been playing that a lot again. Mm -hmm. uh, Mech Which... Warrior Online, Insurgency, Hacknet, um, then of course Rocksmith, Strider, and Plague Inc. a bit, and then of course Star Wars, the MMO. <laughs> mm. um, Civilization, Civilization Five. Does it suffer from every version of Civilization that precedes it? In that, after a while, you have so much crap going on, it takes twenty minutes for your turn to end, and you sit there watching the screen. Or is it um, different? Well, if you're playing by yourself. Not really, because uh, you can move through turns really quickly, but I'm multiplayering it with a friend, and he bitches and moans the whole time that my turns take too long. 
you don't feel it when you're actually doing the turns. It doesn't feel tedious. Like the old ones yeah. where, oh, God, I have to do this at every town again. It's uh, yeah. a lot of the micromanagement has been taken away if you want it to be gone. Um, but it's, it's still, if you're at war, it takes time. It's mm. positioning units and stuff. So, but, yeah. but still, it's still not bad. I, I prefer Civ 5 to anything else at the moment. Um, and with all the expansions, it actually makes the game a lot better. Because Beyond Earth at the moment is, I played through it like twice and just went to fuck it, not playing Beyond Earth again until they have all the expansions released for it. Because the game just feels so slow and goes nowhere. Mm. So. How is it different from previous versions of Civilization? What's, what's new? So is there anything new or is it yeah is it is it anything new or is it just you know repolished well, the Civ, same well seeing as civ 5 is five years old i think um, i mean obviously you know it's yeah. not it's not a recent game but i'm saying comparing yeah. it to like three four um the the main thing is you can't stack armies <laughs> that uh, that's your biggest difference and they've taken away where you always had the choice of going, say, Germany and having two leaders to choose from. Now you just have a leader for that country. So that's, oh, okay. that's your biggest difference. Mm. Um, and Beyond Earth is, is really tedious. I think at the moment you get three types of um AI you can play against it's mm. like they'll go in one of three three routes where it's like war with the aliens live with the aliens or uh, hybrid and that it just feels too limited they need to bring in more subtypes there so mm -hmm. so no uh, but the, that's about uh, it it's service serve it's just a fun game to play with my friend who's in London. So it's something we can yeah. sit and chat while we play it. It's yeah. like a game of chess, just slightly more mm. complicated. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So, uh, I'd say chess is more complicated. <laughs> yeah. Not, not going... complex, complicated in that you have to do more crap. No, you have to think ahead and chase as well. Not go... Hmm, pottery, enter, 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 <laughs> enter, enter, calendar, yeah. enter, enter. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's, it gets, a, it's basically one of those games where if you think about it, and if you had to do like an honest trailer about it, you'd be like, this concept is stupid, but it's fun while you're playing it. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you're just basically doing the same thing over and over and over, but... Also, but freaking time sink. One more turn. Mm. One more turn. Shit, i got to go to bed. One more turn. Wait, my research pick finishes next turn. Oh, what's that? Oh, one more turn. One more turn. You know what? Yeah. Let's... Yeah, but see. yeah go mm. on. Go on, go on, go on. I, I just want to say, this is the great thing of actually having friends who have wives and then playing games like that because I have that problem of like, oh, I don't really need to sleep, so I'll just play, play, play. So playing with him, He's like, my wife's home. And I'm like, okay. He's like, I have to go. I'm like, okay, that's one way to make sure we end every evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On, on, on that topic, I miss, let's go nostalgia again. I miss the games. Like you said, in Civ 5, one more turn. Oh man, I'll, you, you look at the clock and it's like, 12 o'clock at night, you look at the, you look at the clock and like, Okay, cool. I can do about five more turns. You finish those five turns, or what you believe is five turns, and then like a light shines in your eye, and it's the sun from the window rising. Like, oh <laughs> shit! It's seven o'clock in the morning. I need to go to school now. <laughs> you know, yeah. good five turns. <laughs> yeah, it was a good yeah, one. Quick and good. Yeah. yeah. I had that problem with Meridian 59, mm. one of the first online multiplayer games, MMOs. Um, 
where also it's like that was when I was 14, 15. Mm -hmm. So it's also go to bed at 11 and then make like I'm sleeping till about 1 where you had to then muffle the modem sound so your parents With don't the wake pillow. up from the... <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I'd play like till 6, 7 in the morning as well. And then it's like, uh, parents come to wake you up and you're like, oh, I'm already awake. I'm going to die at school today. <laughs> you know which uh, game it yeah. was for me? Mm -hmm. It was uh, Diablo 1. Uh, one more level, one more level, one, one more level, level, one more level. Hey, I've gotten to the catacombs. Okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Shit, I nearly leveled. I'm in a level. Awesome, I got a level. And uh, then it's like three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh shit, I've got school tomorrow. Mm. For me, it was actually uh, the first game that I remember doing that was actually Diablo 2. Mm -hmm. Because it was released during my uh, during my matric year and uh, grade my 12. grade 12, grade 12 year. And I was like, cool, it's Sunday evening. I'm going to play three waypoints in, reach the first one 10 minutes later, reach the second one another half an hour later, reach the fourth one an hour later, and it's like, okay, wait, I'm here now. I'm going to play until I get to Act 3. Get to Act 4, I think I should sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> and my, uh, my mom actually, my mom and dad actually took a photo of me. This was like a day before I had to write a subject in grade 12, like a very important subject. They took a photo of me, and at the back of the photo they wrote, 8 o'clock at night, this is how he studies. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there in front of the computer going, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Time sinks, man. Gotta love them. Gotta love time sinks. But uh, when Diablo 2 came out, um, I had a friend, uh, him and his girlfriend used to play, but they shared a computer, right? So to prevent war, they would play waypoint to waypoint. Until he figured out he didn't actually have to open the waypoints at all. So he just skipped all of the waypoints all the way to the end of Act 1. Saved and then figured out, well, there's no actual fast track to get back to where he had to be. <laughs> So to play the whole of Act One over again. <laughs> oh, by the way, the other game I forgot about is Rebel Galaxy, which is really cool. What it's it? it it's um, Eve Online without giving your life up to Eve Online. Is it? Yes. Is it the? No, no, no. It's a single player. Is it the thing where you can only move in two planes? Or in one yeah. plane? Yeah. You can only move um, like on one level and you do your things. Yeah. Yeah. Freelancer? No. Comparison? Um, uh, it's uh, like, as far as you remember from Freelancer, I'd still prefer Freelancer to this. Um, just from memory. But very, very much the same tactic where... You're open to, if you just want to mine asteroids, you mine asteroids. If you want to do cargo transport, you do cargo transport. If you want to fight, you fight. So you have all of those options. You have factions that you can improve your standing with. You can join the pirate factions if you want to and fight against the military. Hmm. So, yeah, everything is available to you and it feels open in that sense. Okay. So it's, it's really cool. I, I'm enjoying that a lot. I just haven't played in about a week or so. Yeah. Uh, well, we haven't reached the hour yet, but I believe Kaviex wants to join us. Yeah. I believe. What's he saying? Um, quiet. He says I forgot about the yeah, elf I'm... image and hasn't said anything else since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know you. And they. Oh, so, 
So there, there he replies. There he replies. He probably looked at a couple of videos before actually listening to this freaking stream. No, I, I, no, I know what he went to go do, but I'll tell you guys in the break. <laughs> mm. Right. So, uh, fuck it. I don't know how long the delay is. Thirty seconds, generally. 30, 15 actually, it should be 15 on a good connection. On a good connection. Yeah, but also you get weird things because myself and Happy Hila yesterday at the end of the stream, we both were about 30 seconds behind for some ungodly reason. I think that game actually slows down stream time. Like, Is live. It? Yeah, I think the game that I played, that specific game, actually influences your output to stream so what it, what happens is because it has to interact with chat and everything mm. it slows down chat and i think it slows down stream by an extra 10 or 20 seconds at least at least um uh but yeah that was quite cool uh, let's quickly talk about the 24-hour stream you were part of for most of it uh, two way. Yeah, I was there for about eighteen hours. Most of it, yes. Eighteen, uh, a bit more than eighteen, a bit less than eight. Yeah, let's let's call it eighteen. It was from about six o'clock in the evening my time. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 eighteen or seventeen there. It's close to that. So now that you've got. Now that you've had two rounds of Fibbage, two st different 24-hour streams of Fibbage and Quiplash, what do you think of those games? Uh, they're okay. It's it's fun games to play, but if you play it enough, you'll just get so bored of it. Mm. It's, it's the same thing, like just normal board games. If you play 30 seconds or whatever, if you keep on playing it, you'll just get so yeah, that's, frustrated that's and thing. bored by it. That's the thing. I mean, it's a good idea for 24-hour streams to have it on there only. Yeah. But do not have more than one 24-hour stream a month. <laughs> because uh, it, it mm. gets... it gets It's a good concept. It's a cool concept. The, um, what it is, basically, Slab Wrangle is a party game. Where yeah. audience members, if you don't get to join the game on Twitch, uh, can't join the game game on Twitch, you can still join the game the, as an audience member. And in some games, you can actually influence the outcome of the game by your votes. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, so like in Fibbage. Yeah. Fibbage, uh, Fibbage doesn't actually have that audience interaction uh, in there, but Fibbage is basically where they'll uh, give you a fact with one word missing they'll have the correct answer and everybody else playing the game um must make up a lie but and that sounds truthful yeah it must be you must create a fib that's believable yeah. enough so that other people will choose yours above the other people's uh -huh. uh, so you get you get points if people choose yours and you get points if you uh, um get the truth yeah that's how Fibbage works. And then Quiplash. Quiplash is, is meme simulator. Fuck it. <laughs> meme simulator. Yeah. If anybody said Donald Trump or John Cena, I just didn't vote for, vote them. for them. Yeah. It's basically, uh, they ask you questions and you have to come up with, uh, with Quiplash. And you have to come up with the most amusing answer to that question. And um, this is a game where I think... South Africans would appreciate like one random British guy, caveats, <coughs> answering some <coughs> questions because, man, their questions are fucking, their answers are usually brilliant, man, usually dry as fuck and everything, man. It's brilliant. Um, but yeah, I liked, I, li I liked it, but I was so glad for our Rocket Leagues, man. It's like, fuck it, I'm done with Fibbage mm -hmm. and Quiplash for at least 10 minutes. Enjoy these 10 minutes. Play the game! <laughs> oh shit, I have to go back to Quiplash or <laughs> Quidditch. Uh, for Fibbage. Mm. Quidditch. Mm. Fibbage. And that's uh, that's really not because we um, hated playing with you guys. It's just sometimes Quiplash and Fibbage get so slow-paced. And if you've been awake 
that long. Yeah. You just start going, I have to wait for everyone to answer. What? Yes. Uh, yes. You, yeah, so that, that's why we needed the Rocket League, uh, Rocket League in between just to keep the adrenaline flowing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, I think Caviex is ready. And I think we're about at an hour as well, so I think we can yeah. do our 10 minute break. We can do our roughly, yeah, let's call it a 10 minute break. Let's do it a 10 minute break. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, just, I just have a suggestion if, if you want to do it. Uh, what about you put on song requests while we're in the 10 minute break? Or do you have songs playing? I, I'll put I on, I'll, I'll put, I'll put song requests on. Yes, let me. Uh, I'm afraid to put it on now. So give it about 10 seconds after song uh, after we've gone to the break, and then you can have song requests. Hopefully it works. Um, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen of the VOD, see you after the break. Twitch chat, see you after the break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 